you, Jennifer. All right. So I'm going to call the meeting to order um, at 2.13. This is the April 10th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And I'm going to announce, it's already been announced, but I will say again that this meeting is being recorded and I will begin with a sound check to make sure everybody can be heard and can hear. So I'm gonna start um, with you, Hala. I can hear you, can you hear me? Yes, excellent. <laughs> um, and Alexis. Hello, I'm here, thank you. Okay, Yvonne. Yes, I'm here. I can hear everyone. I hope you great. can hear me. Yes, you sound great. And uh, Jennifer? I can hear you, and I'm here, and I just let Dr. Shabazz in, so. Great. Perfect. Uh, and Pamela, can you hear us? Yes, and um, I, You're I can hear You're heard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. How about you, Dr. Shabazz? Can you hear us? Maybe your, I think Dr. Shabazz's audio might just be connecting now. Um, Dr. Shabazz, if you hear us, just let us know. Um, just unmute and let us know when you can. All right. So um, let's see. Uh, Ms. Bridges is uh, was un was unable to attend the meeting today, um, and Dr. Irv Rhodes is in another meeting, but is hoping to be able to join us shortly. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and then um, hopefully Dr. Rhodes will be able to join us. Um, and I think Dr. Shabazz uh, is in a position where he's unable to mute at this unmute at this time. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start with our first public comment period. We'll just um, start there and then we'll move into our agenda. And just for folks who are listening in the public and, of course, for our uh, committee members, today we are going to spend the first part of the meeting discussing and finalizing our survey, which is due to launch tomorrow. Um, and then we're going to have some updates um, on, on some other things. And I would also like to have a discussion with the assembly on the elementary school building project. You may remember earlier, maybe about a month ago now, Maura Keen came and spoke to us in public comment and um, asked if the AHRA was interested in making any sort of statement or endorsement or anything along that lines for the elementary school building project. So that's on our agenda as well today. So if you have, hi, Dr. Shabazz, seeing you. <laughs> Um, so if you would like to make a public comment, um, this is our first of two public comment periods, please use the raise hand um, feature and um, I will uh, recognize you and we'll bring you in and you'll have up to three minutes to make a comment. And then um, we'll be listening carefully, of course, um, and then we'll have a second public comment period later in the meeting. All right, so I'm not seeing any um, right now. So we are going to go ahead and move right into our survey. And it's gonna just take me a second. I'm gonna pull up the latest version of our survey, which is looking really, really great. Um, let's see here. Okay, and the Dunahue Institute has gone ahead and turned um, the link into a tiny URL. Um, there's a full link as well, and also a QR code. And let's see here. Can you all see my screen? Okay, great. 
All right, so this is our cover letter here. Um, and this is sort of our final review of, it is our final review of the survey before it launches tomorrow. So I just want to make sure that we read it carefully and take our time. I can still make changes this afternoon. Um, so, and I did send it to Ms. Bridges and to Irv, um, so they'll be able to provide me if they have any additional feedback. But essentially, everything that we have discussed as an assembly has been included. Um, there were there was a public comment last meeting uh, from uh, Kiara, and I wanted to review some of what Kiara had uh, suggested with the group. So let's first though go through here. Um, so this is um, pretty much the same as it was. This is an addition, if you can see where I'm highlighting here, this survey is the first to explore Amherst residents' attitudes about race and reparations. Um, Dr. Irv Rhodes uh, had sort of the middle of the night epiphany that he wanted something like this to be included in to 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 frame that this is the first survey of its kind in Amherst um, to ex to explore attitudes around race and reparations. And then um, we have our contact information um, and. Our membership. Yes, Jennifer, please. Can you change the phone number from the 3001 to 0360, which is the DEI department? So this is actually the phone number to me as a like to the town council. Oh, as a council? Yeah, yeah but we can but, we talked about this last week. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Jennifer. No, no, it's okay because then we just send you the message because yeah. So that's... Yeah, I didn't want to put my cell phone necessarily in there because I think it would be more for folks to be able to contact. I've I've received other voice messages through that number. Um, but the outstanding question is, do we also want to add the DEI department? Um, so uh, whether it's to Pamela or however we want to state it and have that phone number. So I mean, my sense is that this is probably fine, but if if folks feel differently, we can certainly add um, Pamela and or Jennifer's contact information. We have a general email, I mean, phone number for DEI. Okay. That we so, both get, but you don't have to add that. I just wanted to let you know that. Go ahead, Pamela, yeah. So, um, I'm thinking that perhaps just to make sure that there's only one singular response so we don't get different responses, only having one number might be better. So okay. it's technical questions are going to carry and other questions are coming in directly to you. Um, but, uh, you know, we're happy obviously to have our number fielded there as well. Okay. Yeah, I think that uh, Carrie seemed like this was thought this was a good way to go. We don't think we need to make it more lengthy. Um, so um, I will just give the heads up to whoever is um, responsible for checking the council. I assume that would be Athena. Um, I'll just let her know that this number has been um, identified in this survey so that she's on the lookout for that. All right, so I'd like for us to go through this um, both, we're gonna go through it as if we identify um, as Black and of African heritage and if we don't, so that we can see both, um, because there is a, we've added a couple things here. So this is um, how it starts and we'll select, oh, and to answer the question from last week, um, you can go through the survey and you cannot answer anything and that and you'll still be able to press forward so if you don't click anything you can still press forward to the next question so that was an outstanding question we had last week so here i'm going to say yes 
and for some reason I need to move this around a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, and then um, we removed, I think there was a third option here that we had talked last week about that we removed. So this is, um, do you identify as black and of African heritage? We're gonna say yes. And then for now, um, let's just, we'll say, yeah, we're actually gonna say yes here because if you say yes here, you'll see all of the questions for folks who identify as black and of African heritage. And we'll see the peoplehood question here as well. So we'll just say yes here. All right. And then this was, I thought, by the way, just wanted to really highlight, and, and I think Carrie felt similarly, um, that I think Dr. Shabazz's instincts to really make this a more focused question was a really, really good call. Um, and it it definitely feels, has a lot of integrity, I think, to, to put it in this way. Um, so this is... Uh, Again, um, to commit two million over ten years to the fund. So Carrie hasn't changed this yet, but we had a phone call this morning, and we talked about not actually including the the amount that was committed to. So to simply say, do you support the town's de decision to establish a dedicated reparations fund? Question um, mark. Because the amount has already been committed to, and that's the minimum. Of course, we hope to identify other funding sources, um, but it, it would be, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't seem necessary to include that. And it, she thought it might get too into the weeds to include it. Do, do other people have thoughts about that? She who? Who's she? Um, this is Carrie from the Dunahue. Carrie. All right. Yeah. I, I just yeah. didn't get who she was. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I did see, I think Dr. Shabazz put a thumbs up on that and I agree. Okay, great. All right. So we'll make sure that that, um, gets updated. I know she was, she was going to do the updates sort of all at once this afternoon. Um, so let's then go, we'll go to the next question. Um, this is the sort of general question, thinking about your own experience and then having a um, a place here to expand if you would like to. Um, and then we have our systems. So we've added Amherst to each of these so that it's clear we're talking about Amherst, economic, healthcare, public schools, political system, um, policing. Um, we have Hampshire County Courts and Judicial System and then housing system and social services system. And I really wanted to thank Jennifer Moyston for um, the suggestion to add the social services system. I think that was really great suggestion. Um, and then there's a space that if you'd like to add other systems um, or if you'd like to expand on any one of the systems. So I'm not seeing any hands. So I'm just gonna keep moving if I don't see hands and we can always come back. Okay, so this is if you have selected that you identify as descendant um, uh, of an enslaved person, then you will get the uh, peoplehood question. Um, and this is how that looks right now. So I'd like everybody just to take a look and read that and make sure it looks how we want it to look. All right, so not seeing any hands, so I'm gonna go on. And then this is a place if you'd like to expand, you can do that there. Okay, and this is our eligibility section. Um, again, uh, we combine these per the suggestions from last week's meeting into one question. Um, so the question is, should eligibility be limited to descendants of enslaved individuals in the United States? And that sort of gets at both of the questions that we originally had. 
Um, and then there's a general question about any other eligibility criteria that folks feel should be considered. Nice and simple questions, actually. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's a pattern, which is like a direct question and then room for people to add, you know, which is great. Um, receive is misspelled in the top, the first part of the question. Where am I? Scroll up, scroll back. Oh, up. to our little, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Receive mm -hmm. represent reparations. Receive okay. Is misspelled. Perfect. Okay, great. That's. Okay. All right. So moving on here. Um, all right. And then this is, um, and I'll actually just point out. So this goes right now, it's set up for everybody who completes the survey to um, participate in. So this is where we ask about um, types of repair. So we have the financial assistance for buying or remodeling, renting a home, starting or improving a business, educational scholarships, symbolic acts such as renaming spaces. So we removed the apology um, per our conversation last last time. I added public art installations. Um, I'm happy to remove that if folks don't think that's appropriate, but um, it seemed to me that worked well with with this. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing Yvonne shake her head. So, <laughs> um, And then we have cash payments. It's and a then... great idea. Yeah, especially <laughs> with the big conversations about memorials and stuff. And then public art installations encourage um, visual artists as well, which I think is great. If there's something like that happening, that'd be great. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then other forms um, that you could fill in. And then um, this is about sustaining our work. So we really got this into a much clearer um, couple questions here, a few questions. So um, one question about a successor committee instead of two that we had last time, educational opportunities, um, and then here's where I wanted to spend a little time with folks uh, with the assembly today in, in really getting this right here. Um, I thank you, Alexis, for sending in um, these. So number two and three here, Alexis sent in. Um, Curry and Erin uh, had like cannabis. They, they weren't exactly sure what that meant, I know it came up in maybe the last 30 seconds of our meeting last time, and I think it was Dr. Shabazz. So I'm not sure, Dr. Shabazz, if you're able to unmute to speak to that right now. Um, and it looks like maybe not. Uh, oh, Alexis, yes. Um, I, I guess this is just from my own understanding. So does town employees include um like teachers um town employees include teachers that's a great question <laughs> um jennifer can you speak to that <laughs> look we <laughs> we read each other's minds <laughs> um, teachers are not so it's a little bit complicated right cuz there's the region and then there's the elementary schools and they are part of like the educational teachers associations. They're not like town of Amherst employees, the way that I, Pamela and I are town of Amherst employees. But if you give me two minutes, I will clear that up. But I also just wanted to say that sentence, I'm moving my arrow like you can see, please select all that would you like to see Amherst pursue? Please. I, I don't see your arrow because you can only see oh, if I, I, I don't know why I think I can do that. <laughs> Please select but, all that would you. Yes, that is a, <laughs> a typo. <laughs> okay. Well, so, so when I just to, just to jump in there, like when sure. I was saying it for like all, all the things that we had listed before in terms of like the category, like, so like we were talking about 
the school system. We were talking about the healthcare system. We were talking about all those things. Like I didn't, I, I guess that's what I was talking about. I wasn't, I was pretty vague, but like, I, I think that just limiting it to town employees doesn't do enough. Okay. Um, so let's hold that and then see what you, Yvonne. Um, yes, Yvonne. Yeah, I think that's what I was getting at too. I thought we had covered all, a couple of other areas like um, housing resources. And um, we talked about um, there being some uh, attention to education um, for not for education for students, like, like which ways would be ways for us to activate students in education. Um, yeah, I thought there were other things that we included. And also, I think I sent you a note that says cannabis is not an action. Right. So what is the action around cannabis? Yeah. Right, so right. If we're going to take an action with it, right. And I also, I wanted to hear from Dr. Shabazz. He's not able to, um, to, to comment in, the, in this moment. So we might need to come back to this. But in terms of what I had sent you, Yvonne, about like what, a truth and reconciliation process seeks to do. Um, and I said this last week, but when Robin was asked this question at the town hall, she talked about how, from her perspective, it was like other uh, organizations and entities in the community that would sort of take up the truth and reconciliation process. So um, she sort of alluded to it as something that was a community-wide uh, healing uh, process around a particular harm. Um, and I'm wondering how that differentiates from what we're talking about with the systems and, and things like that. Um, so maybe we'll just hold this unless other folks have input on that. I know Dr. Shabazz, um, I've spoken with him about truth and reconciliation, um, several times in the past. So I just would love to get his feedback on that too. So, you know, I was talking again with Mara Keen, mm -hmm. um, about, uh, what the land trust does as far as you know, they have uh, 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 at least one opportunity. I don't know if it's every year or every now and then. I mean, she talked about it when she came to our meeting. Um, but I'm thinking that um, programs like that that are supported by the town mm. where and, and focused at people of color or Black people, you know, that these are programs that um, Black Amherst residents can enroll in and take advantage of whatever resources there are that can assist with, home buying or with home ownership and i think that that is some of the stuff that we're looking to begin with uh with the reparation system so that's where i agree with you is there some kind of um is this just a duplication question i mean uh, or are we throwing out our um our ideas so that like what you just said which is about like other groups jumping in and saying, oh, we have the means to offer that kind of program mm -hmm. as well. If it's a if it's something that um, the committee feels is important, an important truth and reconciliation process for the town. I don't, I, I mean, people can correct me, but I don't think that the town has any programs like that that supports any group in particular. Is that is that true? I mean, I'm I don't think that, you know, when they talk about um, home ownership or first time home buyers, it, the town isn't connected to anything like that. That's like a federal government program. True. I don't, I just don't know. And if there is something like that, I mean, that would be great to have as something that's uh, targeting um, black families in Amherst. Yeah, we can, let me look into that. I, what I would say is like what, for example, Jennifer and Pamela have begun to do um, in collaboration with Crest to hold like the healing circles and the racial day of healing. That's how I, what my mind thought of as a truth and reconciliation process. And that is differentiated from directing reparation benefits, even if it means, for example, um, in coordination with a bank, a local bank who would help provide, um, you know, great terms for um, for a reparations program. I I'd like to have that included in the list. Mm -hmm. in, 
you know, I, I, we have to flesh out the cannabis thing anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but I would, I would like there to be something that says the town, you know, will uh, endorse and support um, such a program. Because I think that that, and then I think similarly with um, policing, the justice system in Amherst. Yeah. I do. Okay. There's so, so many things adding. that happen in the high school around students. I know that, you know, there's folks in this room who can speak to that, you know, that, um, but I do feel like, you know, there's support for students in the high school, but it would be nice if there was recognition and more resources that go into supporting our students in the high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just, um, yes, please. I'm sorry, Jennifer and then Pamela. Sorry about that wanted to follow up with Alexis and her question. So the elementary schools are paid by the town, but when you say town employee, they're looking at the municipal employees. And so the school teachers at the elementary school level are go through training through the school system. So again, it's kind of complicated, but typically when you refer to town of Amherst staff or employees, you're um, the municipal employee, as opposed to the school teachers. And I don't know if we can mandate that from the school teachers because they are exactly. under the Mass um, Massachusetts Teachers Association. Exactly, that was the words I was looking for. Um, Pamela, maybe you want to add or. Uh, Pamela, you're, I can't hear you. Here we go. I was going to say, I'm sorry. It seems like there's a desire to add to this list uh, um, both of um, actions that would be taken maybe by the town and also by other organizations or, um, or entities within the town. And so you might include everything in the list, but then clarify that first introductory sentences to say that um, uh, you know these are elements of a truth and reconciliation process that you might um, happen within the, com the community, both the municipality and the broader community. And then that would allow you to list you know, some of the things that Yvonne suggested or other folks have suggested that expand beyond the reach or scope of the town exclusively. Perfect. That's an excellent solution. Yeah. And I think we can do that really quite easily, actually, um, without a lot of words. So, <laughs> um, does, okay. So, um, what I'll do is when we are finished with our meeting, I will, um, get something together that I can, um, just, you know, make sure that folks are comfortable with, but you'll just have to reply only to me as usual, just so that we're not in violation of any open meeting law. Um, okay. So let's, and then this is other suggestions um, related to reparations. So this is, uh, you know, if anybody would like to say anything else, Jennifer, your hand is still up. Did you, I don't want to move on until I Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So here's our demographic. Um, and I want to make sure we really look at this carefully to make sure it's exactly how we want it to be. Um, so we've got how long you've lived here. How long has your family lived in Amherst? How long have you lived in Amherst? Um, yes, Pamela. So um, in that first set of questions on demographics, you have, uh, uh, you don't have 20 to 30. So you have 10 to 20 and then 30 to 40. Did you mean to skip that? I, you know, it's interesting. I did not. Um, and I, I, Carrie and, and Ellen came up with these. So and they skipped it on both. So let me mm -hmm. put that in my notes to ask about, um, just so that in case they did not mean to do that. Why do we have to go to 100 years? Is this 100? More than 100 years, really? 
Can I'm sorry, that? Yvonne. Can you say, what was that? I said, I, I can't imagine someone's lived here a hundred years. It could be. We trying to um, take an account of centurions? I guess, I mean, definitely a family could have lived here, um, right, for more than 100. But I think that there's a possibility that we could have an elder that is has lived here, was born right. here. And yeah. yeah, I mean, it's probably not highly likely, but um, OK, I see. I hope they give us their name if they're more than 100. <laughs> we should know that stuff. No, That's really, for true. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, yes, I see Pamela. I don't know if your hand was still raised. Okay. So I see, um, Alexis and then Hala. Um, I don't mean to go back and maybe I missed something, but was, was there something concluded about what was going to be on the last list? So like Ms. Mendez brought up uh, like the various things that I, I felt like would be good to add to these but like did was there some sort of decision made about what was going to be added to the, this list so I took notes on what everyone said and then offered to put those into a question um with um Pamela's suggestion of language in the um intro and then to send it all to you just for final approval and just ask that you send it your response directly back to me. Um, but we could also just decide on them right now if if like go, you know, wordsmith it right now if if we wanted to do that. No, sorry. I just I, I think that I just missed that part. So thank you. Okay, sure. Um Dr. Millicart Shabazz has posted in the chat. Okay. Which I is not, yeah, I will read it out loud. I think he's in a compromised position right now. Um, so um, so he, he, he suggests the cannabis and police reform as well. Um, and then he says, do we need so many decades, 20 more years, more than 20 years, more than 20 years is enough of a breakdown. So maybe getting at what you were also, Yvonne, getting at so how do folks fear feel about that do we need so many decades alexis i guess i'm well is i i don't i don't see the harm in this i think it would be interesting in seeing in in a breakdown how many of our um our african heritage families have lived here for that many years. Um, like my family has been here for 50 years at this point. Um, so I don't, I don't maybe, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a problem with it, but I guess I, I could definitely be swayed if, if, <laughs> if somebody has a good reason as to why, but also like, I, I don't, I don't see the harm in this, I guess. Yeah. Can you all see the chat, by the way, when I share screen, you can see what I've like yes. from my screen. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, no, not from my screen, Yvonne, only no, on, my, on my own screen. Yeah. Okay. Not, not I on didn't, your not on my, so when I share screen, it doesn't show you everything. It just shows you, it, it doesn't show you the chat. It was the question. Okay. No. Okay. Um, Hala, you had your hand raised? It was a similar comment about all the decades. And so it's been covered. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there was one other just comment that I tried, was trying to get into my notebook and then, um, what was it here? Um, Thought there was another comment. I'll have to go back if, unless somebody remembers something that was either misspelled or, um, I don't know. We'll come back to it. If it will come back to me, I'm sure. Maybe it was well, Alexis's question about um, if we had reconciled the last that was on my mind. Just to, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I'll make. I'll. I'll. I'll come. I'll go through it again and. 
Um, it was okay. a sentence that um, Jennifer pointed out, right? As an error. What, One yeah. of the other questions was was mixed up. Let me, Jennifer. Do you which one was that? Um, can you go to the previous page and then sure. scroll down? Yes. It's this. Oh, I'm pointing again. Please select all that. Oh, that would one. you like to see Amherst pursue? Okay, perfect. I do. Yeah, I have that one. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get through here. Um, okay. What best describes your housing situation? Are you a student? Yvonne, yes. It's mundane and you can skip it if you want. But, and I know Dr. Shabazz uh, can't talk or maybe he can answer this question, but I've always been curious about why ethnicity was only focused on Latino or Hispanic. Is it just the limit how many checkoff boxes there are? You know what I'm saying? No, it's um, that is the federally designated categories. So under the census rules and regulations, there's only ethnicity is limited to that question. Wow. Um, but um, your question on on race actually, could you sure. scroll scroll up just a little bit? Yeah. So the question on race could be expanded if you wanted to do. Um, uh, Pacific Islanders, but uh, but that those are cens census categories. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's a lot. It's a longer conversation, but yeah, it That's is. Fine. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. I always wondered about that. Okay. Sorry. We were driving. I was talking to Carrie um, on the way home with my children in the car, and they were they began asking me similar questions after that conversation so i would be interested in having that conversation as well um yeah it's very you know like you know all right so maybe dr shabazz will respond in the chat <laughs> if he does well yeah oh, alexis well so okay um i th i think it's a it it's a it's a muddy conversation only because like i I don't like if my understanding is that African American is not a race. Black is a race. You know, race, we're talking about political um identity that's that's constructed and can change over time. Um and so I'm I guess I'm wondering um for our for our purposes, does it just make sense to to ask what is your ethnicity? And leave it at that if we're are, if we're determining um, who's because we've already determined who's black and of African heritage. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm yeah I don't know I'm a little bit confused. Uh, Dr. Shabazz says OMB requires five minimum categories: white, black, or African American. American Indian or Alaska Native, Asian and Native Hawaiian or other. Pacific Islander for race. And then they permits the Census Bureau to also use a sixth category, some other race. So, I mean, we could include a like some other race. I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, like there are white people and black people from all over the world. And like I'm black and I can check Hispanic, but I'm also like a Caribbean, you know, which is a different you know, it's a little different. And the same with, you know, like a, a white person whose family's from Russia, they're not from France, <laughs> you know? So I always wondered why the ethnicity was even a question and lim so narrowly limited to just Hispanic or Latino, you know? Um, but that's not here nor there. I, I was just, it was just a general question. I agree with um, 
with a Lexus around Black or African American. And I think that's because of the new, um, you know, uh, the new category that was created for African American. And so um, just so I understand you, Yvonne, so we get this right, when you say you agree with Alexis, um, is there an action that we need to take here? Is there a change we need to make? I'm not sure we do. I'm not sure that we can. I think that, you know, and I will, you know, hmm. he, wrote, he wrote Hispanic or Latino is a person of Cuban, Mexican, Puerto Rican, South or Central American or other Spanish culture or origin, regardless of race. So, so Spanish but culture Haitian, could mean right? from Spain, which is now we're in, in Europe. Uh-huh, but then Haitians won't have anything to check, right? <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, for real. No, I yeah, mean, it's crazy. Yeah, it is a little crazy. It's crazy. But I was just, you know, pointing that out. I don't think we can take off African-American. Um, I I don't think so. But I just brought up the idea that, that um, we're, you know, we're feeding into a system that is limiting for people to check off. So I would like, prefer not to say is great, or I also would like other. Okay. In each category, say, prefer not to say, but also other. Some other race, like right. you some said, other, some right. Other race. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'll add that. I did see Pamela and then Alexis. So I was just going to say there's a strong argument to have your categories match the federal uh, categories um, in case you want to use the data for additional purposes for grants. Um, if the categories align, that makes it um, much easier uh, to report the data. Uh, and I, you know, I recognize that there are politics behind the various categories, but um, but it's it is in your best interest to have the categories align with with the federal federal categories. That makes a lot of sense, and I think Dr. Shabazz is also here. Um, he has agreed to that with that too. Um, yes, Alexis. Okay, I okay, that's fine. I I mm, okay. I I guess I just have to get over my own personal qualms about this, but I guess I'm I'm wondering. If, if this can just be a, an ethnicity question rather than a race question only because like, I, how, it, yeah, I, but if, if not, then, then that's okay, I guess. But like, if it, if, you know, I, I don't know. Okay. Maybe I just need to get over it. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Do you want to sit with it? Yeah, sit with it though, and we can come back to it if it's still feeling like it's, <laughs> you know, um, well, it, is that okay if we do that, Alexis? We'll keep moving and then we can come back to it. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to hold myself in this moment. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, all right. So we have voter, we have age. Um, and then this was the income question. I wanted you to see how this turned out because um, we had talked about this. So um, the other thing I wanted to say is in talking to Carrie again this morning, like what answer are we, so what is this helping us to determine, you know, um, that we're not already determining, say, from understanding how people view the economic system in Amherst? Um, and so I, I'm just curious if people have thoughts on that. So if you, um, let's say you said yes, let's go and look. Okay, then we broke this out into three months, 12 months, three years, and then it's been over three years. Um, that is how it looks right now, but the floor is totally open for suggestions on that. And we should look out, Dr. Shabazz will be switching over to his phone, so he might pop out and then need to be brought back in. Um, yes, Pamela. So I think the benefit of these questions is their correlation to some of the other questions that you've asked. So um, if you're, um, if you, if someone responds that, you know, they're interested in having housing for, for example, for, um, or housing efforts around renting for reparations, and you see that there is a correlation to this income question, then you can say, you can talk about 
a, a demonstrated need because of the correlation between the two. So, I mean, I, you know, I think that it's probably worthwhile and keeping it um, if it will correlate to some of the other answers. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And it just, I, I don't think there's any reason not to. I, I, I agree. Um, let me just see. Okay. So then you get to hear, thank you for taking the survey. Um, my name is spelled wrong there. <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> um, we'll, we'll correct that. And then this takes us um, to our Engage Amherst page. Um, so I, I'm not sure I like visit our website. I feel like it should say visit our Engage Amherst. I don't know, but that's just to get that out there. Like website sounds a little, I don't know. I don't know if people have thoughts on that. That's picky. <laughs> All right. So the other things that I wanted to, let's go back. Actually, Jennifer made an excellent suggestion after one of our recent meetings, um, where if you do not identify, um, as black and of African heritage, so let me just go here. Um, let's see. No. Um, you get this question. Uh, okay. So this is a question to say, okay, you're not going to go in and, and answer about the systems, but if you don't identify, but have you witnessed this? And so to say yes or no, and then to be able to expand. Jennifer, is this sort of what you had envisioned with that recommendation? She just stepped away for her desk for a second. <laughs> oh, darn. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll, I'll, we'll come back to it then, but it, how does that look? Does that look okay for everyone? Okay, great. Um, all right. So the other thing I wanted to show you is, um, this, so there's a couple things that are happening right now. The person who, my ex-mother-in-law who works on our design is creating a flyer right now for us um, that is going, this is, Carrie shared this one. It was something that they used in Williamsburg to do a community-wide survey. Um, and it sort of makes the ask to folks. Um, and I wanted to share that I had a an email conversation with um, Rep. Mindy Dom yesterday. And she, oh, I think someone might need to mute. Okay, it's Dr. Shabazz. Um, let me just see, if, there we go. Okay, so um, Rep. Dom made some really great suggestions. She is going to help us get this out. She's going to send it out to her constituents, hopefully in her newsletter, as well as through her social media channels. Um, she also made some other suggestions about making sure that um, all of the council people get it out to their constituents. Um, of course, the paper survey, which we're going to have. Um, and so this this is essentially something like this we'll have, but with our logo and our words. Um, and we'll, I wanted to just kind of give you a little bit of a thought process around what I um had in mind for getting this out. Let me stop the share. So if we can get all of these changes made this afternoon, which I think that we can, um, as long as I hear back from folks about the um, truth and reconciliation, I will do that as soon as we finish up. So if you could just respond to me on that, that would be great. Um, then the, we have that list, um, you might remember that we use to get it out to folks. Um, so what they'll have is an, I'll be drafting an email. Um, they'll have the flyer, they'll have the link, the tiny URL, the QR code, as well as, um, it will be on the engage Amherst page. Um, so there are going to be multiple ways that it can get out and, We'll use all of the lists we have. The town of Amherst will, of course, put it in through all of their uh, community calendar, all the different ways that they can get it out on their social media. 
Um, but I think we only have three weeks really to turn this around. So I just want to really encourage all of us to get it out. Um, Alexis, is there something Amherst Meet could Amherst Media put this on the carousel? Is this something that can happen on the carousel or is, is that only for Alexis events? Calls you yeah, definitely. Okay, great. We, we oh, maybe hold on. Dr. Shabazz, are you? Hello. Hi. Yeah, I was going to suggest we could do a short video on, like they do for the birds and the light, and because I see that going around and around all the time. Um, and if we could just for a few weeks have a similar um, thing like the birds, I think it would be a great outreach. Could you say more on that, Alexis? I, yeah, I can I can speak to that. Um, so those were actually videos that were sent in like we didn't we had no part in making those. But if definitely if someone's willing to like be representative or like like if a number, I, I don't know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter how many people want to be a part of that, but basically can speak to um, the initiative and what it is and how to access it that can uh, that's a that's a pretty easy video that we can um, throw on carousel absolutely and and then it would also be available on like a place like youtube and then you can share it um that way i don't know it's yeah it's a, it's another means to get the information out so there's no problem with that okay i don't know what that is at all but i think it sounds great <laughs> like, like a commercial basically <laughs> oh okay <laughs> okay um jennifer um i was gonna say what about having a like a not a town hall but just a, a, like a an event where you, people come specifically to fill out the survey or answer questions with the survey i don't know if you, i know that like the i think it was maybe the health department did something like that for the um or it was the senior center for the age and dementia yes. so they would have like events like specifically you know to go through the the survey with folks so that's an idea and then I don't know where where you are with the list of things, but like the PGOs and the principals and all of that would be great. Yes, I have all of those are pretty solid, um, but I think that's a really, really great suggestion. And I just want to, so Reptom, I'm just reading, um, she said... She wondered if the elementary schools could include it in their newsletters. Um, and then she also had suggested, are there any anything that like particular mailings that the town's going to be doing around this time that this could be tacked on to? Um, she suggest, suggested like a tax water bill or a census street list. Yeah. Thing. I would I there are uh three places, two places to check. One would be at the collector's office and I can do that later either today or tomorrow and also with Amherst Rec because those are the two departments that send out stuff in uh like a mass bulk mailing awesome if you could do that that would be fantastic thank you Jennifer mm -hmm. I'll coordinate with you um I did want to quickly review um a public comment that we received last week I mentioned this earlier on um one of the notes that I have here and I think that Kiara might be here, so um, Kiara could definitely correct me if I'm wrong here, but one of them is um, whether we wanted to include a working definition of reparations, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, of African heritage um, anywhere in um, in the survey. Um, but you know what, I'm going to go to a public comment period again, so maybe I think since Kiara has sat through this final review, maybe she could speak again um, with with respect to these things so that I don't misspeak. Um, and let's just see here. Um, okay. So let's do a quick time check because we've gotten through the survey and I want to get to the elementary school building project discussion before folks have to leave. So Hala, what is your timing looking like? I'm available to 3.30. Excellent, okay. Yvonne? Um, I'm actually over my time. 
Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. As soon as we can get this done, it would be great, but okay. I can stay a little longer, but. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and Alexis. I'm good. Okay. Dr. Shabazz. Okay. Um, Dr. Shabazz is, is not able to um, respond at the moment, but I'm sure he'll check in when he can. Um, and how about Jennifer and Pamela? I have a hard stop at like 325, but Pamela may be here. And also you guys can continue if okay. needed. Um, can... But Dr. Shabazz said he was switching to his phone. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, so let's just see. Um, okay. So uh, just about three weeks or so ago, uh, we got a public comment from Maura Keen. Maura was coming to speak about the very exciting elementary school building project that we have happening in the town and asking if the AHRA would like to take a position or provide any sort of endorsement um, for the project. So I first just want to make sure everyone is aware of the project and what the town people are going to be asked on May 2nd. Um, I don't want to waste our time if everybody knows. Is everyone pretty much up to speed on that? Yes. Okay. Great. So then I just want to open the floor for some discussion here to see, and just to give a little, um, you know, context to this. Um, there are other committees of the town who are either writing opinion pieces like the ECAC, which is um, the climate committee, um, and there are other uh folks in town, what, whether they be individuals or with organizations that are making endorsement statements. Um, so we have complete flexibility here. We can do nothing um, or we can uh, do something really substantial or we can do something in between. Um, so the floor is open for discussion on this. Yes, Alexis. Oh, man, I didn't want to be the first one to say something. I see two hands, but I can't see the who has the other hand up. I think it's an attendee. It's public comment. Oh, the public comment. OK, yeah, that's right. I forgot we can see them both. Well, <laughs> go ahead and be the first. <laughs> oh, God. OK, so um, I just I, I think that this is a um, I don't I don't know if this is something that's um, necessarily appropriate for our body to be um, and, I, and I obviously I'm not trying to make a decision this is just something how I feel personally um, I don't know if this is something that's appropriate for our committee to be speaking on or endorsing um, only because it it doesn't tie like I, I can understand how it can tie into like the environmental sort of aspect of it but I'm not sure if this is like really speaking to what we're working towards. Um, I, I I can say personally, I want the building to be built, but I'm also very aware that um, we're ha there's a controversy with our teachers and how our teachers are being paid and the, and the cutbacks in the budget um, and our ability to, you know, be able to sustain um, how we're, you know, Amherst is, you know, laws itself on its education and, and how, how are we exactly, are we sustaining that? How are we, how are we um, providing a competitive um, uh, salary? Um, how are we assuring that our teachers are able to live in Amherst? Um, and so this kind of like goes back to um, some, some of the main issues that we're trying to address and trying to fight against. And so um, I'm, I'm someone who like, you know, is is torn and 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 feeling like I want both to happen, but I know that um, people are. Um, I I don't want to. In in short, I don't want to be a scab. Um, so, <laughs> um, I I'm very open to hearing how other people feel, which is why I didn't I didn't want to speak first. But like, I don't know if this is something because of the controversy and because of like how how much is that at stake for both sides like I don't I don't know if this is something that we should be um um doing as a as a committee 
Thank you, Alexis. Thank you for being willing to go first. And I know I I, I totally hear you and um, curious what other folks, if anything. So if we did want to make a, a statement of endorsement or support, I don't think that means that we couldn't also support our teachers at the same time. Um, so that's one way to think about it. But uh, but but part of what they're asking is to not do that in support uh, until the contract is um, like uh, part part of what they're asking is to not support the school until they're being given um, reasonable compensation. So that is, they did, you're right, they came out and they made that statement, but they have since, I don't know if you've seen that, Alexis, and maybe you have more information than I do, but they have since retracted that statement um, in a written, in a, in a, in a follow-up statement um, in which they said that they have no position on the school building project, but that they do want their contract terms to be properly negotiated. Um, so I don't know if it would help us um, if we I could provide sort of the the statements that are out there to the committee um, so that we can take a look at them and then revisit this next week or if other folks have um, particular opinions that they'd like to share about this right now. The other suggestion is um, we could have some folks next at our next meeting who are involved in the yes campaign in the school building project that could come speak and answer questions and clarify things. Um, but again, it's this is, you know, I'm personally on my own writing an opinion piece in support of the school building project, but that's I will be doing as my own. Uh, individual person. Um, so it's really for the assembly to think about whether, as Alexis said, yes, Alexis, please. I didn't mean to cut you off, please. No, 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 go ahead. Well, I, I guess, I guess I'm, yeah, go ahead. Well, so I'm, I'm wondering if this can be like, I, I, it feels, I, I feel some sort of way that I can't really put my finger on, but like, if this is not a, a mutually beneficial sort of exchange, um, I don't I don't think that there's any reason why our body should be supporting this effort if if the schools are not sort of in tandem with our work as well um that that feels a little um creepy crawly to me um and so being that it um it, if if something as you know as easy well okay it feels easy to me as as cultural competency being mandated in the schools. That's that's I'm I'm just learning that's something that can't be mandated. Um, and so I'm wondering like what part of the reparations effort are they willing to contribute to or they're willing to um I don't know, I, I feel like this shouldn't be a one sided um sort of relationship. Um not to not to feel like there's like something hanging over or whatever, but like I I'm not, I'm not hearing any sort of um, support or, or I'm not seeing any letters written um, in support of our work, which is, feels just as important. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm wondering if this, if this is going to be a, a mutually beneficial um, relationship. Yeah, so I think what you're saying is like, what is the connection, at least what I'm hearing is what is the connection, the one part I wasn't clear about Alexis is you said, like there, like when you say there do you mean, like the town of Amherst or the like who do you mean when you say there. Um, not writing letters in support or you know I just wasn't clear about that whether whether that's like the yes vote or or even um the you know the school system in general I'm I'm not hearing from either of these bodies okay yeah okay um well let's kind of maybe we can sit with this over the next few days and um we've put it out there um we've heard some comments um i'll try to send some information um and i think sort of from my perspective uh it's the town of amherst that's really building the school and that 
we need, you know, in, for, this is my personal opinion. Um, this is something that I think we need to, you know, move forward with. And I understand that I think it's important to make sure that we feel that there's a connection in any endorsement that we would make or support that we would um, want to give as a body. So both of those feel true to me. Um, Yvonne, you had your hand up. I just had a thought that I kind of agree with Alexis, um, except that um, just to make it clear that if we make an endorsement, it's really about us supporting our constituents. And so that, you know, an endorsement of this school means that um, this would be, this is something that we think will benefit the Black community in Amherst. And, the, and then, so we need to be prepared to answer those questions about why this would be of benefit to the community. I mean, I think that's what should drive any kind of endorsement that this committee makes, you yeah. know, is that it is a direct benefit for our constituents. Absolutely. And even that can get a little bit dicey, I think, when you're, you know, like. Because, you know, I mean, they'll be like, you know, if something, one person could be unhappy and then it's like, oh, man, the, that committee endorsed this. And look what happened, you know, like there's always this, you know, open door for criticism or, you know, um, ruffling feathers or whatever, you know. So that's why I think that we need to be very strong and take a stand if we're going to endorse anything so that if there's any kind of backlash, we could say, oh, well, we endorsed it because of this, you know, and I don't know what this is. You know, in this instance, what is this that we're that we're endorsing for our constituents, you know, and be very clear about what that thing is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think Dr. Rhodes and um and and even Deborah would have Ms. Bridges would have some good insights on this as well. So um all right. Well, you know, the I think people are receiving their mail-in ballots um, this week, and but the vote is not until May 2nd. So we still do have some time to continue the discussion and make a decision one way or another. Um, so if there aren't any other comments, I'm going to call the second public comment period. Um, and uh, we'll take a look here. And... Uh, Jennifer, are you moving? Oh, Jennifer left. Pamela, are you able to move? Um, are you a co-host? Oh, I am here. Oh, okay. Yes, you are. I'm a, okay. Who's moving? <laughs> who's, <laughs> who's moving, folks? <laughs> I think that's Jennifer. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, I let Kiara in first. Okay. Welcome, Kiara. Okay, thank you. There you are. <laughs> um, yeah, I just had a couple of things I wanted to touch on. So to your point about the a working definition for African heritage, uh, that's, <laughs> it's a very broad kind of um, term that can mean a lot of different things for many different people. Um, there's people who are, have African heritage all over the planet, if you want to be technical. Um, and there's also people who are Black, who are Indigenous as well, that are not, may not necessarily trace their, trace their, um, their lineage to the continent. So um, if you could provide more, a, more, a more clear definition as to what you're describing, um, you're asking people if they're of African heritage, I think that would be beneficial. Um, I also wanted to know, um, when the question where you're asking about whether people are descendants of slaves, um, what I was trying to kind of trying to get at last week was if you could include um, whether they are black, black American, and then also also you can say descendant of slaves, but really we're getting at what at the ethnicity of the people, not necessarily whether or not your ancestor was a slave, but whether if you're the of, of the black American ethnic group. Um, you can specify that as well. And I was curious um, how you're how you're um, lining the questions up. I know that if you answer that question yes or no, it will take you to another set of questions. But I'm curious, um, when you're asking about elig eligibility or you're asking about the form of reparations, is that just everybody being asked that question? I know I know also everyone who is Black who feels that I will be asked that question, but will you specifically um, be breaking that out from those who are descendants or is that kind of all collected together and it'll just be disaggregated later on based on who checked which boxes? 
Um, but I think it's important that you also specifically ask um, those questions of those of the Black American ethnic community to be able to compare um, the answers that you get. Um, also, um, you're asking about, or you're you're discussing about the school and whether the HRA should make a statement about it. Um, I'm agree, in, agree, in agreement with Alexis in that um, I don't necessarily see the the inherent correlation between the two, and I think it's best to um, to steer away from any other lateral issues unless it's very specific to reparations or any kind of reparative um, work. And if you're asking questions like, um, what percentage of the construction staff is going to be Black Americans, or what what percentage of the teachers hired, or et cetera. Those type of questions, um, or you know, the land that the school is being built on, you know, things like that, who owned the property, et cetera. If you're not going to be looking at those type of questions, I don't think you shouldn't make a statement um, one way or another about it. Um, but that's that's my public comment for today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kiara. Um, I see Lauren is coming in next. Welcome, Lauren. Can can you hear us? Hi, just a minute. I always regret uh, going to the second public. <laughs> um, can you hear me? Yes. Now we can hear you better. Yes. Good. Um, I have a few comments. Good afternoon. Uh, first is um, my concern that uh, the whole. Uh, work of the assembly on reparations is kind of feeling like a fill in the gap for the chronic issues that um, black um, African American people of color have been dealing with for a long time through um, the issues of systemic racism and anti blackness. And it's not really getting to those root issues that caused the, the issues in the first place. So that's one of my concerns and um, from your discussions and your questions on the uh, on the survey concerning like race and ethnicity, I was just wanting to share some of my thoughts about the term black. You know, I consider myself black. I consider myself a person of color. I consider myself African-American, but there are those who may be of um, mixed ethnicities who could consider themselves black but because of the, the way that that term has been used historically, they may not want to attach themselves to that. So I don't know if that was you know, in consideration when you were you know, drafting those questions. Um, so I, I just think it's uh, important to provide a context, a context of history for the word reparations. And I don't know if you're going to have a definition of, of reparations because I'm a little confused as to um, the historicness of, of, of reparations discussions now in light of you know, the current or the, 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 the current um, you know, pain and murder that, that has been in you know, our current um, news that has brought upon these discussions, but from my understanding and from you know what I've read, that there have been um, forms of reparations, such as like the forming of HBCUs, and also like during the um, after you know the Civil War, there were certain areas that were given to um, Carolinians, Black Carolinians, um, that could be considered form of reparation. So i I'm, I'm just kind of confused as to how you are putting that, that term in context. Um, also, yeah, I, I think also in framing um, the discussion, when I think of my family history, which I don't, I'm not really able to go back that far, but when you just think of the history of slavery, you, you could equate the word slavery to forced labor. And um, I think it's important with when framing and having listening sessions and community discussions that we frame 
um, the topic of slavery by, you know, reiterating that those who were enslaved were working. They were, you know, growing rice. They were growing tobacco. They were growing sugar. It wasn't like they were, you know, just slaves or enslaved, not doing anything, but they were, you know, building into this um, country's economy. And so I just, I just think that that has kind of been lost in, and, and not really put forward in the framing of, of this, um, of the discussions and the discussion of reparations. Um, I have a few more comments, so I hope you can bear with me. Um, I wanted to know too, is there going to be like some kind of formula for how local governments, town, town governments will determine how to disperse, you know, reparations? Is there like a percentage of how much the town is, is black or of color? And um, also like what resources the town has available, like in particular in, in Amherst, if, you know, universities and educational institutions are a pillar in those towns um, as far as ec economics, will that be more of a way to, you know, provide funding or provide resource to a repar reparations um, fund? Um, I have some other comments, but I, th I think um, those are the main ones. And also, um, I, well, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there is a organization called HERE, -E, Higher Education Reparations um, Engagement, and um, they have some resources on their website. Um, and I also, I, I also just lastly want to say that because I, I often say that I am a parent, I am a, a mother of three children who are in the Amherst school system. I just think it would be kind of inappropriate to endorse the um, new school project. One being, I think it's going to go ahead anyway. Um, and, and the way that the, um, the town council um, votes on certain things, I think it's kind of been apparent that depending on who you are and, you know, depending on who you are and, and who's asking for money, it, it, it depends on who gets that money. So I just, from also from the history of, you know, what's been going on in the school systems, I just don't think it's appropriate for, for the African Heritage um, Assembly to be endorsing the new school project. Those are my, um, my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lauren. Thank you. Um, so we still have four of us. We have one more public comment. Uh, Hala, did you do you? It is three thirty, but as the public comment does keep to three minutes, I can stretch it out. This is going to be the amount of three minutes. Okay. Yeah. So we'll we'll take Mara, and then we can quickly adjourn the meeting since we've um, we've covered everything. We still have other things, but they'll <laughs> forever. Um, yes, let's bring Mara in. Um, and I will do that because I think Jennifer had to leave. Welcome, Mara. Hi, this will be really quick. I just wanted to suggest that if for the survey, you might want to set out a table at the farmer's market that's starting in a week or so and get people there because that's a lot of town traffic and have people fill it out there. That is an excellent, excellent idea. Do you know when that starts, Mara? I thought it was next week. Okay. I know Maybe. it's in April. Okay. I think the town has the ability to get a table. Is that true, Pamela, that the town can get a table? Okay. So I'll send Jennifer an email and see if she can look into that. That would be, that would be excellent. It's a great idea. Um, okay. Thank you. Was that your full comment, Mara? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. This has been really a great meeting, and I hope um, everyone has a great week. And I'm going to adjourn at 3.32 p.m., and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.